Okay, I'm gonna do a video on uh, this was done by direct percussion using the copper holler bopper, and I'm gonna do one on trying to make it thinner using indirect. And what I've got, I've got like a one, two, three, four square edge on this thing. It's kind of pointed. It's a long copper bar, and this end is more rounded for when you're first starting to thin using indirect, like losing more mass. This is when you're getting down to something real thin. I'm no expert at this. I don't claim to be. Uh, first person I've seen to do it was Ted Frank somewhere in the late 70s, early 80s, up at Fort Osage. Or maybe it was at D.C. Waldo's house in Branson. I don't remember. But anyway, uh, we're going to see what happens. I might break it and I might not, but i got some high spots on there I'd like to try to get out. And I'm going to mark them. There's one right there, one right there, and I'm going to mark them with chalk. I'm going to pressure plate me some isolated platforms and uh, try to get this out of there where you can see it. Uh, this is the right angle for indirect, right camera position, but it's not for me pressure flaking. I gotta get up here and pressure flake, so it'll be a little strange for me. It don't feel right. But anyway, I'm doing some little isolated platforms here. See how they're gonna work. I'm gonna slightly grind this edge and I'm gonna look to see where I got that little sharp edge and hit one right here on this. And I'm gonna start on the tip where this one is and I'm gonna get right on the edge of it. And I'm gonna tilt this up and hit this way because I won't drive them very far. Took all that out. See the red line's gone. I hope that's showing up. Alright, right here. That was not coming off of there. I think I'm letting my piece slide. I was. I'm letting my copper bar slide off. I'm just straightening the edges up now. All that red line is gone. And here's the last one. I didn't grind it too good. See if we make this red line disappear here. Put it right here. Get this out here a little more. Maybe we can see it a little better. Sit right on that edge. Oop, let it slip off. And all that red line is gone. This little outside edges of it's all you see. That one go. I'm gonna come through here. I got some little high ears now in between these flute channels I knocked off. And I'm gonna take them out rather than pressure plate. And I got all them removed. So now I'm gonna look at it and see what I got on the other side. This is pretty good. I could move one more right here and one right there. I think I'll come across this way on this one. And uh If we break it, you know, that's the way you learn. Like I say, I'm learning. I'm not an expert at any of this stuff. I learn every day. But Jason Newman is the one that got me into the direct percussion. Because when Ted Price started, he, he was doing a different method, and I'm not going to go into it, but he, wasn't, he was having real good results, but it was harder to get the results than, than, the, way we, than the way people are doing it now, like Jason Newman. And uh, but anyway, Jason's the best. I say that there's a lot of good people out there that's good at it. Uh, well, see, how I took that chunk out. I wasn't close enough to the edge. It's wonder it didn't break. I'm lucky. So I got to be careful. I thought I had it sitting right on the edge, but I didn't. There we go. 
the most of it out. Thin this area a little bit more. Now, a couple years ago, I'd have done all this pressure flaking. I could have got a real thin pressure flaking, but old age is caught up with me, and, and I'm just going to be honest with you, it hurts too bad to pressure flake. It ain't fun no more. I used to like to pressure flake, but now my wrist and shoulders and hands hurt so bad when I pressure flake, especially my hand for a grip. I got some good results then. I really moved some little hilly areas, some high spots or hills or valleys, or whatever you call it. So I, I call it the ridges between the flute channels. Like I call the flute, even though you press the flake in the low areas in there where you remove the flake. I call it a flute channel. Probably the one that does that, but anyway. I don't know what else to call it, maybe just a low area. Okay, now we're looking, and this is where I knocked that U notch out, so I'm gonna see if I can come here and kind of even it out a little bit before I did that. You gotta be real careful here. There we go. There we go. Now we're going to go to the other side. This side's real flat. So we're going to come over here, and I got some uh, high spots here and here, one there and one there. So what I'm going to do is this side first. I got some right in here. I'm just barely tapping this thing, not hitting it hard at all. That billet's so heavy, I just kind of basically let the way that billet fall. All right, got it ground. Come down here right on the tip. This is where you sure enough got to be careful. Got that one. Got that one. Not that one. Oop, didn't get that one. Try it again. Slid off of it, slid off of it again. Better be careful, I bet I broke it. I'm gonna go here to the side. Yeah, I think that uh, was not quite below the center line enough for me to catch it good. Okay, now I'm gonna come across the other side and uh, work on it. We're gonna call it quits. It's just a playing around deal. It's what you need to do. You need to get your pieces and start experimenting and playing with them. If they break, so be it. I mean, you know, that's, that's how you learn. I guess when you learn to shoot a gun, you don't hit the target every time. It don't mean you quit and give up. You keep practicing. <laughs> Waste a lot of bullets, learning to be good. Shoot a lot of rounds of ammo. You're gonna waste a lot of rocks. Trying to be good at this, it's the same thing. I've had people say, well, how long is it gonna take me to learn to do that? I can't answer that question. How long is it gonna take you to be a world champion pool player, a tennis player, a golf player? Everybody's ability is different. Mine's slow, it took me a long time to learn it, and I'm still learning. I'm not the smartest. Cooking a cookie jar, I guess you could say. 
I learn every day. All right, I'm not gonna straighten this edge up as wavy. And uh, I'm gonna do something out right here because it's gonna make it look like it's thicker than what it is because it's beveled where I set them platforms up. I'm gonna straighten the line up right here on this. Right through there. Tell you what, this indirect sure saves me a lot of pressure flaking, man. All I gotta do is a little touch up notching and stuff like that. Okay, let me get my knife out of my pocket. See if I can dig it out of that. All right. Figure out the best way of showing that. I don't know if that knife helps or not. But anyway, the, the edge is so wavy, I need to straighten it up. Especially right here, it's going this way. But anyway, maybe y'all can tell I turn it real slow. But uh, that's the neat thing about indirect percussion is uh, it's a lot easier than straining and doing pressure flaking, and you can thin them real good with it, make some real nice stuff. Hope y'all enjoyed the video.